Okay, hello, here we are once again, it's me, Waifu Belector, the only fair human on earth, and today, let's redirect our attention to fighting games and the fighting game community. It's been a little while, and I've got some thoughts. To be specific, thoughts concerning Tekken mostly, but also Street Fighter a little bit. So let's go ahead and get into it. As always, if you end up enjoying the video, please consider liking and subscribing but for now, let's get to chatting. So okay, obviously Tekken came out early at the top of the year and I personally, along with a bunch of others, felt that it was and is a banger of a fighting game. It's had its balancing troubles throughout the year as well as some controversies, usually nonsensical ones, but at the core it remains an outstanding banger of a fighting game. However, you can't remain new forever and it's hard to keep everyone's attention. So here at the back of Tekken's release year, almost 10 months later, we find the game in a bit of a lull. Excitement for the game seems to have died down a whole hell of a lot, and discussion about the game just seems to nearly not exist except in hardcore player circles. And listen, lulls are bound to happen with a continuous game that plans to be around for a while. At the beginning, you're brand new, so everyone's excited, then you settle into the more core group of fans, but every now and then, especially if you aren't careful, you'll slip below your core and a little into a lull. It's fairly standard, it's regular, it happens, but that doesn't mean that you want it to happen. And that doesn't mean you can't get stuck in it if you're not careful. Now, I don't think Tekken is that in danger just yet, but I'm just saying. It happens to games is my point. So just to be clear, I'm in no way implying that Tekken 8 is dead, dying, or on its way out, only acknowledging that they're sorta in their first major hole currently. So how did they get there and what are they gonna do to get out? Well, as much as you hear hardcore players talk about balance and frame data and God knows what else, and as much as those things should be tended to, they very obviously are not the key to success here in Tekken's case. After all, it's a lot harder to drive off the players who are extremely concerned with that stuff because those are the most dedicated players. So yes, they should be served, but clearly the casual market, the casual player, is what will be most beneficial to your game because most players are casual. And casual players who typically aren't the best at these games because of how casually they play, what they need is a reason to play beyond I just want to be the best. A reason to be excited beyond I can rank up to God of Destruction. And of course, for a fighting game, this comes in the form of cosmetics, stages, and the bread and butter, characters. So obviously with characters being the big one, I think the release of post-launch characters has and will play a big role both in getting Tekken into this lull and how they'll get out. Since the release of Tekken 8, additional characters have been added at a fair enough pace, I guess, but it feels extremely slow because there isn't always much of anything in between. So we're just left waiting for the next character drop and it feels like an eternity. And it's easier to entertain yourself with the game and fill that time when the game is newer, but the further we get away from release, the harder it gets to stall for that new drop. Still, I think Tekken was relatively fine until Heihachi. I think that Heihachi was a boring drop. Don't kill me, don't crucify me. I mean, cool, I get it making a moment of it with fans because he was supposed to be dead, and there are long-standing players who are glad to have their guy back, but I think to most people it was just like, yup, there's Heihachi. Of course, you know? I don't know, I think it just kind of fell flat in terms of generating actual excitement to play the game. Heihachi was perceived as having guaranteed eventual inclusion in the game, and Heihachi's perceived guaranteed eventual inclusion in the game makes his arrival happening this early just kind of feel like a stolen slot for pretty much anybody. Because just about any other character would have been more exciting. Despite Heihachi being dead, nobody actually thought he wouldn't come back. 
We all knew he would. So if they had dragged that out more to a point where we could have actually started to question like, oh shit, we're in season four and there's no Heihachi. Maybe he's really not going to be in this game. He's really dead. Then they drop him and we see him and it's exciting. Whereas this, what we got was just kind of so assured that it was unexciting. That's what I think anyway. Now, add on top of this that Tekken 8 still doesn't have a guest character. Everyone expects them to do guest characters. We're all excited to see one, but we have no idea who they could be, and that's fun and exciting, and yet, the guests have just not shown up. I'm putting Nikes on Kazuya, but there's no guest. Now, obviously, they're gonna do guest characters. That's what catapulted Tekken 7 to such popularity. Popularity that has continued with 8. So surely they will do guests, but when? Well, I have two possible visions for the future because I think the guest character reveal will be how they remove themselves from this lull period. My first possibility prediction is that the next character, the fourth and final character in season one, is a guest character. And I think we'll see that guest character revealed at the Game Awards. And depending on who it is, it can almost immediately pull them out of the lull. And I think this scenario is the most likely. My second possibility prediction is that if the final season one character is not a guest and just another standard Tekken character, then while the game won't likely be pulled out of the lull by that character, I do think that in that case, the entirety of season two will be comprised of guest characters. Now again, I think this one is less likely because I think my first prediction is very likely. But in the event that my first prediction is wrong and the fourth character is not a guest, I do believe that all of season two will be guests. And regardless of which is true, I think we can expect to see Tekken 8 exit its lull period not too insanely long from now. And both have their benefits. If the final season one character character is a guest, that gives a swifter exit from the low. But if all of season two is guest, while it would take longer to start, that is a longer standing flow of excitement to ward off potential future lulls overall. And listen, the guest character is what I think will happen and what I think they should do but it's not the only way out. There's still the less slam dunk chance that just releasing a Tekken original character can generate a ton of hype. Maybe the wackiness of someone like Roger or Alex would go over well, or the freshness of a brand new character. However, on the other side, you can also pick such a terrible random guest character that no one fucking cares. But still, what's most likely in my eyes is that they reset their hype to a good place with an exciting guest pick. And don't get me wrong, Balance changes and all that certainly can do wonders because the hype that serious players have for something can sometimes attract new players for the simple fact that the excitement is infectious. But I think that the core game is certainly good enough that they should just focus on the big things that affect their health and popularity. So uh, yeah, that's more or less all I've got to say. To be honest, some of the same things can be mentioned about Street Fighter though, but it's not the exact same, right? You know. Street Fighter has already entered its guest character phase, and it's their first time ever doing that, so that's exciting. And I think they'll get a lot of attention soon, likely at the Game Awards also, when and if we see the trailer for Mai there. Because Mai, as you might know, has some assets <laughs> that I think will go over favorably with the internet in Street Fighter 6's RE engine. <laughs> but still, yeah, the in-between of Street Fighter character drops tends to be a little light on content. And their big problem is where are the fucking costumes? Not the avatar costumes, the actual character costumes. They just don't come out very often. And there aren't a ton of them. It's just a huge departure from what Street Fighter 5 was doing with costumes and what Street Fighter V did with costumes, and the amount they had for a long time was one of the few good things about Street Fighter V. So I don't know why Street Fighter VI has thrown that away. I do think the devs at Capcom know how we feel about costumes by now, and I think there are already plans to remedy it, that's what I would guess, but I'm really not sure when we'll start to see that remedy come into action, you know? They may be cooking up in the background until season three, and then we start to get 
a way better flow of costumes, but I don't know, we'll see. Okay though, now I'm actually done. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, why not give the video a like and maybe even subscribe. But even if you don't, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to do your favorite thing, hop in the comments and tell me how stupid and wrong I am. And until next time, I am Waifu Belector, I am just a normal guy. I like hentai, and I love some good ass tech. Goodbye.